I think one of the things that I'm most worried about isn't as much what we have ahead from an economic perspective as it is investors' behavior. Because as we all know, behavior drives the market. And I think people have become really complacent and kind of like, you know, fat and happy with these really big returns. And yeah, there have been a lot of bumps and weaves over the last decade for sure. But ultimately, you've been able to count on really big annualized returns. And I actually couldn't believe how big that number was. Like I could, but then sometimes when you see it actually in writing, it's, it you know slaps you in the face and wakes you up. So 16.5% on an annualized basis over the last 10 years, particularly given what we've endured, is a lot. And then I start to look out going forward and I'm like, you know, we've got some tricky things ahead. We've got $30 trillion of debt to service. We have inflation that may be a little stickier than people expected. We have valuations that are still one standard deviation over their historical averages. We have taxes and regulation that are likely to get worse. Geopolitics aren't great, getting back to your China point, so maybe that's tying it together. <laughs> and the Fed's going to start tightening. So there's all this. I do not, and I want to be really clear, like this is not me saying, hey guys, I think the market's going to crack and crumble. I don't think it is. I just think that these hurdles out there are going to make returns harder to get in the future than they were in the past. And I think people are going to need to start to work. And that's hard. Like it takes a lot of brain cells to make really good investments. You can't just, I don't think you can anymore just be like, oh, I'm going to buy FANG. You know, oh, that's great. I mean, look at what FANG did this year. There's so much disparity within FANG. You've got Apple and um, what is it? Apple and Amazon up five and nine percent. And you've got Google and Microsoft up 36 and 61 percent. So there's a lot of disparity. I think there's going to be hard work ahead. And I don't know that people like to do hard work. And that's what worries me the most. Yeah, Jenny, we're looking at FANG right now, all the FANG stocks with the exception of Alphabet in the mm -hmm. red. And by the way, I think you just officially tied it all together. Um, so you're hitting on some okay, of the, the potential headwinds. <laughs> Glad I didn't disappoint. <laughs> you're hitting on some of the potential headwinds that are out there. One of them that you mentioned is tightening. How is tightening going to impact the markets? Mm -hmm. How is tightening going to impact the returns that we can or cannot expect? Yeah. So I think, to me, the beauty of Jay Powell is how unbelievably well he's telegraphed everything. And, and part of what I'm trying to do here is telegraph also and say, hey, you know what? Let's not cry. Let's not be too upset if we get 5% next year, 8% next year. That's just fine. What Jay Powell's done for us is to say, get ready, get ready, get ready. It's out there. We're going to tighten in 23. Sorry, we're going to lower rates. We're going to raise rates in 23. It's too early. We're going to start to tighten. We're going to start to take that $120 billion a month out. So it's all about the response, right? And I think because he has been so amazingly clear in that messaging, I don't think that there's going to be a huge negative emotional response to, to the tightening that's coming. But what it means is that there are going to be less dollars sloshing about. And when there's less dollars sloshing about, people are going to be less excited about taking risk, right? Because those dollars become more precious. So I actually think the risk return equation starts to adjust. And I don't think that there's going to be the cavalier level of risk taking that we've seen over the past really five years. And th I right. think that will impact the market by dampening future returns. Again, still positive, just okay. not what we saw. You know, Jenny, stay right there for a second. We want to touch on a couple of upgrades and downgrades okay. that crossed the tape just a moment ago. We're going to start with actually one of your picks for stocks. Barclays downgrading Disney to equal weight, saying long-term streaming guidance could really be at risk with Disney Plus subscriber growth slowing significantly despite a launch of new titles and movie releases. UBS downgrading Virgin Galactic to sell with a price target of $15 based on a lower pace of flight operations for longer, as well as a weaker balance sheet position given higher cash burn before positive flow into 2026. And Morgan Stanley adding McDonald's to his fresh money buy list. Morgan Stanley says Mickey D's top line has performed well in the U.S. during the COVID impacted period. Key international markets that were heavily impacted in 2020 now in recovery mode, according to the bank. Jenny, any of these names stand out to you? Well, Disney I used as my final trade on Friday yeah. on halftime. <laughs> so that was kind of disappointing to see it turned around and downgraded. But they're talking about streaming. And, and the reason I used it as my final trade was because we saw that travel restriction for international travel in the U.S. get lifted on Friday. And, and I think that as normal travel and tourism returns, that the parks are actually a really significant part for Disney. When we bought it last summer, our thesis was that they would eventually get to $10 of earnings. That got kicked down the road a little bit longer than we thought, but I think that's still on track. So I'm not, you know, I'll need to read the whole Barclays downgrade, but I don't think it was too severe. I don't think it derails our buy on it or our hold on it by any measure.